In this video, I want to share with you a trip I took where I pushed my limit. And in reflection of all the reasons how I got to this point of where I, how I push my limits and how pushing those limits have helped me in not just travel, but career, my personality, all of the different things that interest me. And if we all have this mindset of pushing our limits, imagine how much more we can do and grow as a race and as a people. Let's get into it. To kick off the year of 2024, my wife and I took a trip, a working trip to Europe where we would work the evenings and ski during the day. And it is quite busy. It's definitely not a vacation. I don't call these things vacations. They're more of adventures. I prefer that word because it's going to push you. And a part of this trip took us to Charmin, where we had done a bunch of research and we had the goal of doing the Valet Blanche, which was a glacier and we're reading quite a bit about it. And we knew this is something we had to do is going to complete our trip and make everything worthwhile. And that ultimately was our goal. But reading into it, there is a lot of safety concerns being my wife is a snowboarder. We're both very skilled. We often almost always do doubles we've done if there is anything labeled triples we do off piece and we do just about everything and anything worth that looks challenging when it comes to skiing we really push ourselves we will ski the whole day nothing but double diamonds we won't even take a lunch break so it's fair to say our endurance is there our skill is there we were just a little hesitant because the snow conditions weren't great and Valle Blanche didn't seem that hospitable to snowboarders and until you do it you really don't know how challenging it is but everyone's telling you it's it's super challenging and going down as a snowboarder you can only go down the most dangerous routes so just the information alone it kind of wigs you out a little bit like you know that sounds a little concerned are we good enough you know you just question everything well, I mean ideally you should have the confidence but you're always gonna question these things and, and when you're pushing your limits you should be. because that's the thing you should feel a little uncomfortable not so extreme like I've never done a double diamond I'm going to Valle Blanche you know that's too extreme and probably fatal but in this case I told you our resume of things we've done and how we got there and we can easily explain these things to the guide services and they can tell us if we're ready so when we first arrived at Charmony in France we wanted to explore the snow condition and make the connections and find the right guide service to take us to Valle Blanche and so that's what we did immediately. Starting on a day with the lifts at one of the local ski resorts. And we found that the snow was fairly shitty, to be honest. <laughs> it was pretty bad. It was hard, stiff, but one nice thing is in Charmony, it was a little different than what we saw in Italy and Switzerland. You can go off piece a little bit. I mean, it's a little bit harder to go off piece. It was really icy and crusty, and just to be clear. So when you're off piece, it, it's not super enjoyable, but it's still a good challenge and, and we were doing it. And it's something we could expect on top of the volley blanche. But we did hear from the guides that because it's higher altitude, it warms up less during the day. And so it's a little bit, it, the snow is quite a bit nicer. So speaking to some of the guides, we found the right fit and we knew which guide service we wanted to go with and we needed their availability so we went there and asked them on it they said that they were pretty concerned with the poor snow conditions about a snowboarder going down and they hadn't observed my wife's skill level so okay so we negotiated and we reasoned with it that we're gonna do a private off piece day with one of their guides who can observe her skill level and and that should be a warm-up anyways and also probably warm up for us so it seemed like you know that works for us so that's what we agreed to and that was to come. So one thing you might be asking yourself at this point is why do you do this stuff that you do, Don? Why do you want to go ski Valle Blanche? It's something maybe some of you really want to do and some of you might think I would never do that. But I will say that it's the adventurous spirit in me. I've always been someone who's wanted to push my limits and improve. In fact, it's to the point where I could probably never be happy with what I have because I 
always want something better. And that's not to say I have maybe some mental issues where I'm just displeased all the time. No, I can enjoy things that I, I do enjoy, but I feel like I always want this perpetual growth. I always want to improve things. I want to hopefully make life better for other people. I want to be trying to make an impact in some form or matter. I'm just a little unnerved if I feel like I'm wasting my time, at least somewhere deep down inside. So going back when I was very young, it was insufficient to just be able to pay rent. And now I wanted to be able to afford and make a difference and maybe be educated. So eventually that led me down the road of becoming an engineer. And there are a lot of steps along the way I'm going to just gloss over. But the main thing is I constantly was pushed in this direction to be perpetually improving myself and getting better at everything I do. It's not enough for me to just be somewhere and coast. I need to be trying to drive change and difference. If I'm not doing that, I feel very unhappy, to be honest. And so with that, I started getting into travel. I have always wanted to travel. And so I needed funds for that and better job need need to improve the skill sets. I need to achieve more value as an individual to get higher earning income to be able to travel more. And with that, I found as I started traveling, I wanted to get off the beaten path. There were a lot of places, tourist traps and places where just hundreds and thousands of people go. It's kind of interesting. This world is so big and yet so few of us go off of the tracks to explore the majority of it. And we'd see these things on Instagram and for other people, YouTube videos and that's our what we focus on but there's so much more to explore and I wanted to go explore those places the hard to see places and so what do I need to get there I needed climbing skills I didn't mountaineering skills I need scuba diving skills and I started getting into all these things and I will say I didn't learn all these at once one at a time because your focus can only be in so many different places but with that each one would continuously push my limits and comfort zones and in embrace a different way of making myself uncomfortable. Each of these things would kind of build off of each other. Once you do one thing and then you do another thing, you have some residual confidence from the first thing. And you feel like, okay, I've conquered skiing and so now I can do mountaineering. Okay, I've conquered mountaineering, now I can do scuba diving. There are some confidence overlap, being I grow more confident in myself. And this pushes me through to learn more skills and I feel I work and operate at a higher level because of all those things I've done before. And again, this also translates to my career. Because I do all these different things and I've learned a bunch of different facets, I've conquered fears in a lot of different ways. Now it's really hard pressed for any job to push me to the limit where I am getting unnerved. And if I am getting unnerved, I have to ask myself critically why that is. And if that is something that's okay, is it because my skill level is not there? Or is it how I'm handling certain people? Or maybe I don't have the right boundaries in place. But I've learned a lot of things from building a lot of skills in a lot of different areas that really bring everything up in me as a higher value individual. And it's all because I wanted to continuously improve. Even though I do all these activities a day, I am still improving. And with scuba diving, with mountaineering, with skiing, I am trying to find ways to always get to the next level. And if you ask me about any of these things, like where are you at in your journey, Don? What are you learning next? I will tell you because I'm always focusing on something and improving something somewhere. I know where I'm comfortable in. I I need to shatter that up either through courses or practicing some extreme things. No matter how good you are, you will find there always is areas to improve. It's harder to improve and it takes longer and there's maybe less guidance and instruction to improve at these levels, but there is room to improve. So if there's anything I want to take away from this initial opening is that if you're anything like me and you have those ambitions of getting better, traveling and doing more, learn by pushing your limits finding those limits and pushing past them. Make yourself uncomfortable. If you are too comfortable, you will not grow. I've identified this from an early age and I got to the point only because I am always pushing that uncomfort. With that comes some pain. I often hurt myself. I do things, but I don't try to push myself beyond my limits and I don't want you to either. So identifying those limits and figuring out what the next step is that's not going to put yourself in danger. If you're really 
comfortable at doing blues, you should start exploring single diamonds. You're not going to get better necessarily just by doing, you could explore some micro skills and that's okay. But maybe the next step for you is to be trying single diamonds and making yourself a little bit uncomfortable on those and just keep doing single diamonds as your majority, your platform until, hey, I am doing pretty good at these single diamonds. Then you do the double diamonds and so forth. You always have to be finding that next level and level up like a video game. But pushing too far beyond those boundaries, if I were to just, as a beginner, go straight to double diamonds, that can be dangerous and even fatal because these are dangerous things we're talking about. And so identifying those things and just going back to like the career example, if you are an entry level employee and then you're put in charge of a large project as an architect managing people, it's gonna fail miserably because you haven't learned all the micro skills and the confidence that it takes to get there. And I always say that there's two major things to get better at almost anything. And that is skill, which takes education and practice to get better. And then there is confidence, which takes experience experience and also time to build the confidence. And so if either one of those are lacking, you'll feel uncomfortable, which is where you want to be. And you want to be building either one and identify which one of those you need to be practicing more. Confidence will come with enough successes and achievements in an area, while the skill will take fine practice and potentially education if there is some to get better at that thing. All right, back to my story. We all know I wanted to ski Valley Blanche with my wife and we were getting ready for that. But even with the best intentions and goals, you will find that plans can sometimes get shredded up in front of your eyes and you have to adapt. But it's the goal and having that ambition to stay and go to your true north, which is skiing Valley Blanche, which will allow you to adapt adapt to the changes and get back to where you want to be and pushing those limits. So I mentioned we were going to have the guide take us on some off-piece runs around the General Charmony area. And so we went to the most challenging runs. Again, we are advanced skiers and we're usually not afraid of anything, but the snow wasn't great. And we were with a group and quickly we saw that there were people dropping out because they couldn't handle the, the, the pretty shitty snow, to be honest. Especially since we started before the sun was up, specifically before the snow was being hit by the sun. And so it was rock hard. It's like skiing on real ice, but it's not something I was unused to. Growing up, I always challenged myself and told myself skiing when the conditions are shitty will make me a better skier. So fortunately, I was fairly well prepared for this kind of thing, but still it is harder. And with that said, it makes for a more challenging day. Nothing that we weren't prepared for and I didn't have the confidence for, so we weren't gonna stop. We continued through our day and did some great runs and we learned a lot of things. Germany has some great off-piece runs and some great areas for skiing. I was super Super amazed. But being that I am kind of a travel YouTuber now and I wanted good footage, I was filming with my GoPro. I still haven't got a good setup for it. Anyways, I've been experimenting, but I would I had it by hand because I wanted to kind of feel the turns. I am just trying to get good GoPro footage. I haven't figured it out. I am an amateur GoPro and videoer, so you know I, I, I'm sure you see that in some of my videos, but I'm trying to get better. <laughs> But anyways, focusing on hard snow and also filming maybe distracted me a little bit. And almost towards the end of the day, I took a nasty, nasty spill. I could see it almost in slow motion in my mind. I could see that there was this hole that was coming up. And so this snow is really hard. It's pretty icy. There's this hole coming up. And I, I'm sitting there with my, my GoPro trying to make a turn. And I saw the hole and I'm thinking to myself, hole, and I need to turn really fast. And okay, I also couldn't rewind a little bit too. I had a concussion a couple weeks before this too. So I probably, I knew I needed to play it fairly safe and protect my head. And, and I probably shouldn't be skiing anyways. But the concussion aside, I was powering through and maybe with all these things and maybe when you I don't know how many of you have had a concussion before I would not recommend it on my worst enemies but it causes you to think a little bit slower and anyways I probably shouldn't have been skiing I wasn't going to miss this opportunity I'm crazy sometimes but I was skiing and 
I made a bad judgment call of taking the turn and I jammed the, the tip of my ski into this little hole. And you know, normally if the snow was good, I'd probably just tear right through it. But in this case, it instantly dislodged my ski. <laughs> And I have I have my skis usually on 11 or 12 din, so that is some pretty powerful force. It just ripped right off, and I went and immediately fell. I think on this shoulder here, which caused this shoulder to start ripping down ice, hard ice, and it ripped my because I think the fabric of my jacket with the ice obviously causes friction, so it's pulling my arm like this. And here I tore my rotator cuff fairly quickly. I didn't tear all the way, thankfully. I didn't need surgery. It just tore in a way, I'm like five months later and I still feel it. <laughs> so that's how bad it tore. But at the time, I didn't yet know I tore it. I could reasonably, and also I, I want to stress too, I've hurt myself a lot of times. Breaking bones, tearing things is not a big deal for me. <laughs> and I, I, You're going to think I'm crazy now. I've hurt myself so many times I, and I've also done first aid I know first aid and I've done a whole bunch of different courses in different ways like wilderness first aid or scuba and anyways with all that said I know a whole bunch of variations of first aid and a lot of it gives me a good idea of how the human body works and so I understand what is critical and what isn't critical and often bone breaks and tears can be bad but especially if it's a full tear but partial tears not too bad anyways I can get an idea of how badly damaged my body is after an accident like this and I knew it was bad I, I knew I probably tore something I, I, and I put it up in a sling a makeshift sling and I finished the day, day out skiing <laughs> we probably had like three or four days uh, uh four run, more runs and they were good ski runs and I just everyone's asking me are you okay and, and should you stop and so I just put my head in uh my hand in a sling Skiing down double diamonds is no problem for me, unless I'm doing something tricky or pushing myself in some way. So now, because I hurt myself, I'm no longer pushing myself. I know my limits and I'm now undergoing my limits. And so as long as I'm going under my limits, it's a piece of cake for me. So no problem. I finished the day out and it was painful. And I thought Valle Blanche was probably over because how am I going to do any climbing? and carry my skis with one arm. So anyways, that really complicates things. I can finish the day out skiing, but I needed to heal. I needed to guarantee that I wasn't going to hurt my shoulder anymore and I needed to rapidly heal. So I was doing hot tubs. I was just taking it easy. My wife was going skiing instead and I had her go with the guides and we needed to reschedule our Valle Blanche, which was just in a couple days, but there was an issue with that and so Everything was in peril. It was, I thought we were done for. How is this Volley Blanche is gonna happen? I totally screwed up and everything is the worst now. But I don't, I didn't give up because I had a goal in mind and I was ready to persevere. And you could call it stupid, but sometimes this perseverance helps push you through with a bunch of confidence and lots of skill that I've built over the years. And we'll get back to that in just a moment. But I want to also kind of go over some of the takeaways that I want you to learn about pushing your own limits. First of all, it's hard for you to compare yourself to anyone else. And I'm not here to compare me to you or you to me, and that should never happen. You always have to compare yourself relative to yourself, where you are in your conditions, and figure out how you can push your own limits and your own self. But by definition, when I say you have to push yourself beyond those limits and push you into an uncomfortable zone, you have to find your comfort zone in whatever you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis and whatever you're confident you can do with a high percentage of success and find out what it's going to take to increase your odds of failure, basically. And accept failure as part of improving yourself. So there's no way I can get to where I was in this mind state I have if I never push those limits, never. It would never happen. I always had to be constantly doing this and it just doesn't happen after a couple days or a few weeks, a few months, a few years. You have to have this for your lifetime. And if not a lifetime, as long as possible and of course over time it will have a, a building effect to get you to where you want to be and for me that was traveling more and if you want to travel more or experience adventure travel ski better scuba dive better 
and experience more of this world and meet people, then I advise you to move in this direction too because you will be simply able to do more. Or it could be you want to earn more. You want to have a better job that works with your schedule. All these things will be doable if you have this mindset, this growth mindset. Going back to my story, I had said that I have built a lot of different skills over the years and I would need to learn a lot of different things. Even just for skiing, I can break down a list of a hundred different skills I had to learn to get to double diamonds and even doing double diamonds, which ones I need to improve and micro improvements of where I am. The list will just always go on. There will always be things that you can get better. And same for scuba diving, all the finning techniques, improving your trim, experimenting with different gear, new technologies, different breathing techniques. It just goes on. And then you get into free diving and that's another world. There is an endless amount of things to explore, but you will never do better at any of them if you don't focus down. And so my advice and for myself, I always force myself to be acknowledging. I am never learning or growing on more than three things at a time. Of course, with different seasons, skiing, I can only do it during winter time. So when that season ends, of course, that skill is no longer being built and those things are kind of off the limits. But with each and everything I do, I focus on three things that I'm going to be focusing on and trying to improve. And this just limits your potential. And if you're doing a bunch of activities, I'd also leave, let those be like three things or one activity at a time, because I'm only doing skiing. If I want to improve at skiing, I'm only doing skiing. If I want to do scuba diving, I'm only doing scuba diving. That's not to say I'm doing scuba diving like all year and nothing but scuba diving, but maybe I want to improve these skills, these three skills or two skills or one skill. I'm just going to be doing scuba diving until I feel, okay, I'm better at that thing. Now I want to move on to another thing and I'm going to focus on that. thing. So you can also use this for your career as well. Being you're an engineer and you might be focusing on how to use new software. And so there might be different tools of that software. And so I would advise to just play around with one tool until you see that you're using that tool incrementally and feeling confident about it. And you've successfully pushed that limits. Now you've found your comfort zone and that's probably good enough. Then you can switch to something else or you can continue to build your skill, find what the next level is is for the uncomfortableness of that tool and keep improving that skill on that tool and vice versa. You can do this also with social skills like leadership and negotiation. And, and those are probably videos in and of themselves that I can go into another time. Let me know if you'd like me to in the comments below. And another thing that will help you grow is seeking out other people mentors. It's, in this day and world, I've been saddened to see that mentorship is kind of going away or at least not talked about as much. And I think it's super important and super valuable to just identify people that are better than you and are good at the skill you want to improve on and figure out what it takes for you to learn that skill. Reach out to them, ask for mentorship. This could be in different form to be something like a coworker that is good at this thing and you want to learn from them. Or it could be something like a coach. You might have to pay this person for their time, especially if it's a valuable skill and you're teaching this skill to a lot of people. But all these different things, human intelligence is built off of imitation. And so the more you can imitate, the faster you will close on some of these skills. And so you don't always have to imitate, but it's the quickest way to close the gap on some of the skills. Imitate first, and then once you've learned the imitation, then you can explore doing things a little bit different. So that's my advice on how to pick up skills a little bit faster through imitation as well. Getting back to our story, life likes to challenge your resolve. While your motivation will be like a roller coaster up and down, it's your perseverance and your commitments that will help you keep to your true north of what you really want. Ultimately, after I tore my rotator cuff, the guide gave us a thumbs up. He said that our skill level is more than adequate volley blanche and he knows that we would be fine except for maybe the concern in my shoulder and there might be areas where I might have to carry myself down a rope in some areas or other technical situations that might be hard to do with one arm. But aside from that concern, our skill level is there. So he has no problem. He gave us the thumbs up and, and that was that. And so now my mission was to heal as fast as I can. So 
I was just on a war path to to <laughs> to get lots of sleep, rest, and and make sure that can happen. Because we only had a few days left in our time in Charmony, or else Bali Blanche wasn't going to happen. Because I needed some extra days, unfortunately, we hit another roadblock, a logistical roadblock, where there was some company from Paris that flew in and they were doing a big old retreat in the area and they needed lots of guides to take them on top of Valle Blanche. They weren't going to ski it down, but I think they're doing some kind of a company retreat and they just wanted a bunch of guides and their experience and and I saw some helicopter. I don't know what they were doing, to be honest, but they were doing something and they needed lots of all the guides, basically. They booked all the guides in the entire region. And so <laughs> this is problematic for us because we had to reschedule to a point where they were all booked and we wouldn't be able to almost we, it's so hard to find a guide. Fortunately, with enough hunting, we were able to find one guide service and he was, it, he was his guides were actually booked up. And, and the owner was able to have a reference to in a super experienced, a super experienced guide called Gwilme. And the owner was Eric of the guide company Kalesh. So shout out to them. And I'm really happy they were able to make it as work because as this whole video is about, we were super determined. Nothing was going to stop us. <laughs> we were even hesitant to tell them that I only had one arm because my goal was to see how much I can make it work. I, over time, I was realizing how bad the damage was to my shoulder. I couldn't, at the time, I think I could only let it drop. I, I had a hard time even raising it. There was definitely no way I could put pressure on it. It's my shoulder, right? So I, my, I still had control of my bicep and my forearm. So it wasn't completely hosed, but of course you need that shoulder for a lot of different things. So without it, it's troublesome for sure. Now we're able to make it work at this point and we, er, everything was aligned. We got the lift ticket up to the top of the mountain right next to Mount Blanc, which is where you enter to ski for the, the Valle Blanche. And we saw the big company with all the guides going up at the same time. So we had to wait quite some time because they had some preferences. I think they paid probably some good money for it. So, you know, it is what it is. It's just bad timing on our part. I mean, it's just random luck, really. But they were up there as well. And we were worried that there was going to be bad weather on the day we we're going. Looking at it, it looked like it was could be a whiteout. It could be snow. It could be all sorts of things. However, when we got up there, we were uh, pleased to find that the weather was perfect. It was a beautiful day. It couldn't be better. And so what about the bad snow? As soon as we got in the snow, it was the best snow we had experienced yet so everything was lining up it was gonna be a perfect day we had made it i still had my makeshift sling actually no i didn't have makeshift sleep I, I actually went and bought a sling at a local pharmacy which was a challenge in and of itself so maybe i don't know it is super hard to find a sling maybe next time i'm gonna bring I, it's hard to know if when you're gonna injure yourself and what kind of slings you're gonna need but anyways it took me a while to find a pharmacy with the sling I needed, but I did find one and it uh, kept it in a much tighter position than my makeshift sling, which is what I wanted because I wanted to, in case I did fall down or in case I was jostled around, I wanted to minimize movements as much as possible to promote the healing. And I went up with one ski pole and I actually gave the other ski pole to my wife, which is kind of funny. It's just funny to see a snowboarder with a ski pole. We got all of our harness up, our Abbey beacon, and we were set to go. We, we were climbing down to the Valle Blanche upper part of the glacier where we'll board our boards and get ready for the ski. And it was so cool. I took some GoPro footage on the way down. It's just beautiful. And it's a very iconic entry point going down to the Valle Blanche glacier. And as soon as we got down, we got the boards off and we're ready to, we we're just in awe and we're ready to get the boards on. And my wife, and this is the funny part. After everything we've been to, sometimes you just have this lapse of thought. And this can happen to any of us, to be honest. And this is why sometimes complacency is, can get us all. But we were there. She put her board down. And she normally wouldn't do this kind of thing. But she put her board down and then let go of it with her hands and started getting something through her bag. And, and her board started to slide. A glacier. It started sliding down a glacier with crevasses and we saw it just right off on its own into the sunrise <laughs> it was gone we saw it just go 
go and go. Fortunately, Eric, the owner of the company, he thought he could see it and, and he like saved the day. And I have some footage of my wife riding off into the sunrise on his shoulders as as they were trying to go down and retrieve it. We thought if it went into crevasse, it was done for, our day was done. There's no way, well, I mean, I could ski down without my wife, but I probably wouldn't. I would, being as injured, maybe that would be the thing that would say, okay, it's not worth going. But if we could get her bored, the day was safe. And so since her board didn't go into a crevasse, we were able to, they actually went down and they were able to find her board on a little bit of flat spot and get her board back on. And so Wilmay and I got boarded up and we went back down to them. And so, you know, when th times are bad, things can still turn out. I mean, I would have never expected that this was a recoverable thing. And of course, it's our own complacency. It's something that's a mistake that we made. Bad things could have happened. But in this case, we would have just had to hike back up and, and go down with a lot of disappointment. But the day was saved and basically, taking my wife down as a backpack down to her board, it worked out in the long run. And I'm just super happy to that it all worked out. And of course, our guides, they're very experienced. They know what they're doing. They've done this hundreds of times. They've climbed all of the mountain peaks. They're very experienced mountaineers. And so I trusted their judgment. And if they said that the board was retrievable, I trusted it. Because of all of their experience, I know that they're the expert. And something and some people I can learn from myself. So after she was on her back on her board, we were able to ski down some of the best snow we had our entire Europe trip on this glacier. It's an experience I've never, I'm not entirely sure I'll ever experience again because you're skiing down all these crevasses, of course, with experienced guides. And, and after I learned about all the different climbs well may have done in the area, he pointed out all the peaks he's done and, and they're like, they're kind of interesting. They're like little nipples on these big old peaks. So you have to get up to the top of the peak and then to get to the top of the actual true peak you have to climb this tiny little spike or a nipple and you know but with that said it is when you look at them they look extremely technical and pretty intimidating for me but for him he's got enough experience and he's challenged himself and make himself uncomfortable to the point where they are fairly comfortable for him so i knew from all this experience that experience confidence and skill that I was in good hands for trusting him with the details and logistics of this area. And he knew how to handle crevasses. He was very familiar with crevasse rescue and had incidents where he's had to help rescue people in crevasses and can read the glacier in a way that he can predict reasonably well where the crevasses were. Because with the crevasses, you have to understand often you're going to be on what are called ice bridges over the crevasses. You're skiing right over a crevasse often that is basically a thin layer of ice. And as long as the ice is thick enough, there's no problem. But sometimes it's thin enough they can punch through and that's when trouble or even fatal mistakes can happen. And that could just be a matter of luck. And that's often why you rope up. But the goal would be with this kind of thing, being able to read the snow and understand where the crevasses are, where they start, where they go through, and try to find areas that are definitively thicker and or avoid the crevasse altogether if you think it's thin enough. And he's even saying, it's not like a race course, it's a track that you can reasonably go. Every single time he goes up, he has to make judgment calls because the landscape has changed vastly from the last time he went. But being able to ski down that, and unfortunately, I have a lot of footage, but I, I, I only had one arm. So I, I attached the GoPro on top of my helmet, and it's just the dumbest thing ever. I wish I could. Anyways, it is what it is, but I put it back too much, and so it's too high or too low in most all the footage I have, unless I was taking it with my phone, which I know what the shot looked like. And so a lot of the footage I took of the Valley Blanche, you'll have to take my word for it of how beautiful it was. It's like jaw-droppingly beautiful. But I unfortunately lost the opportunity to capture a lot of that footage. And it's super amateur mistake, I'm sure, for like a YouTuber. But with that said, I'll show what I have. And it was still an amazing experience and I can't recommend. And a lot of people, if you go, if you're a skier or you go when the snow is better, 
you will probably go be able to go down an easier route than we had to do. We were forced to only do the most advanced route and most dangerous route, but it was something we had to be prepared. Now, I didn't fall once. I was <laughs> because one important thing is this area was a lot easier than the challenges I normally put myself through and the dangers I put myself through in other areas. I specifically seek out things to make myself uncomfortable. So this area was actually well within my comfort zone. So it wasn't pushing my limits. And so when the danger factor was higher, because I'm um, doing something I'm comfortable with, I have mitigated a lot of the danger from doing this thing. And so I pushed myself already harder. My limits were already higher than what Volley de Blanche demanded. And so I was able to do this potentially dangerous and fatal activity fairly safely. And with the same mindset, pushing your limits and building those limits and skills, you can too. And if you get to experience the Volley Blanche, do the hardest areas or even the easier areas, it's something that will stay with you for a lifetime. You'll be telling your children, your friends, it is an amazing experience. And I wish more of us on this planet can experience it. And let's talk about the takeaways for you to overcome your own limits. One thing I noted, but I really want to touch on is as you're pushing those limits, that bar keeps getting higher. Everything below your bar is now easier. So in the case that I'm used to doing double diamonds, if I do a single diamond, I will be super comfortable. If I was falling down on single diamonds before, you I get really good at double diamonds then I can go back to single diamonds and I'll I can lay money that my skill is going to be beyond the level of single diamonds now and I probably can do them a lot easier and so I could find some more advanced skills I want to be training on and I can practice those on single diamonds as opposed to double diamonds where the risk and danger is a little bit higher and I can practice those until I get comfortable with them and then I can try those on double diamonds. So it's basically as your limits get higher everything below them gets easier. And you can also think of this in the same way as your career. And that's why if you're pushing those limits constantly through your career, you will find you're able to get promoted because being promoted is not so much a reward. A company is not rewarding you for doing hard work. That's what the bonuses are for. They, a promotion is because you're providing so much more value that a promotion is a next level of responsibility and you've proven yourself being able to take that mantle on, which could be pushing your limits in a lot of ways because it's a lot more responsibility. But if you've been doing what I've suggested in this video along the way, it should just feel like going from a single diamond to a double diamond or a blue to a single diamond and vice versa. And when I've done this to one thing like scuba diving and then doing it for mountaineering, I will have a lot of residual confidence that will carry over between different activities and make me stronger at learning and growing in different activities. Because you'll find that if once you do one of these things, you will build a lot of confidence and skills that carry over to some degree, not 100%. You'll be always learning something new from the ground up over and over again. But you'll find that you're with the mindset change and some residual skills from one to the other, you'll be able to pick things up fast. The more often you challenge yourself, the more confident you will become. And when times become rough, the more likely you will survive the storm. This growth mindset becomes a way of life in a part and more ingrained in your personality and how you carry yourself. And if you're continuing to push yourself, I hope you make it viral and then continue to help others achieve your own growth mindset through mentorship and help to others. You will find it helps in so many different aspects of life, from career, your hobbies, dating, and more. And in helping others, you will bring you a lot of fulfillment in life and paying it forward. And this is what I hope to do with this video. And I hope the story that I've given you in this video has helped kind of understand how my mindset works, how I'm able to persevere and how I'm able to push myself even when those times are tough and where a lot of people might think, okay, I'm done. This is done. And maybe to some degree, maybe it's wise to turn back, but I didn't and I persevered. 
and I have a story and confidence that have come from it. And after doing it time and time again, I'm not afraid of bone breaks. I'm not afraid of hurting myself. I'm afraid of living an unlived life. And I just hope to share just a little bit of this growth mindset with you, and I've hoped to inspire you. In this video, I touched on some of my life's ambitions on how to travel more, and I'm able to still work full-time. There's a lot of people that advocate quitting your job, YOLOing out there and trying to figure things out. I've kind of gone a different route and said, I want to just become an individual who can work any job and still enjoy life. And I think this is a much more scalable thing and more people can partake in this kind of activity more than YOLOing and quitting your job and trying to make it work afterwards. So if you're of the same mindset and want to follow that route, I have a video just for you that goes into detail of how I work while traveling and I still travel as much as I can and how I've made it work where I can work while traveling frequently. Check out this video here and take care.